So it's almost November and it's like 80 degrees today and we haven't had rain in a month. So you know what that means? We need to start irrigating. So yesterday I was actually out here and ran in the pump for several hours, moved the sprinkler in several different positions over the course of those several hours. Now I need to add another length of hose to the system and move the pump in a new location. But somebody ran over this section of hose with a lawnmower, that was me, and it needs a little repair before I can hook it up. Fortunately, these lay flat hoses are pretty easy to repair. And I don't know how many more seasons we're gonna get out of these. They've been sitting outside for a few years now and starting to show a little bit of age. So I was lucky that cutoff piece is just about eight feet. So not a lot of stretch lost off of that. If it was in the middle of this, we could either make two shorter hoses or I could get a coupler to put in the middle to uh, keep the length of hose. But I don't have any of those here anyway. So anyway, we're just trying to uh, reach whatever we can reach today with the time that we have. And this length of hose will get us pretty far. So yesterday I noticed this hose was where it connected to the sprinkler was shooting out loads of water and I just realized it's not making a good seal because it's missing a gasket that's supposed to be inside this. So I'm going to look around and see if I have another one of these fittings too and replace that so everything's tight and we're not losing a bunch of pressure here at the junction. I found another one but I couldn't get it off the hose it was on so I just took its gasket out and we can shove it down in there and hopefully it works all right. Well, if I'm grateful in any way, it's not July with 95% humidity, but I shouldn't have to do this in the fall. But here we are. I've got a bunch of little seedlings that I'm worried about drying out. So we're gonna do about a half hour in this spot and we're actually gonna move it downhill just a little bit and then we'll start going uphill. The trees are looking pretty good. We got to do a little bit of cleanup on some of these tops from the last trimming. That one over there, which is like 10 plus feet tall, actually has like a triple top thing going on right now. And I got to clean that up, make a single top, and this tree will end up getting shortened quite a bit. Probably end up around nine feet or so. I've got another one right here that's doing a crazy top. And we got to clean that up. It's got like at least a double sort of a triple so just to overlook that last time we were trimming I think what happened I remember I didn't have my hand trimmers with me I was just coming through with the um, with the hedge trimmers and I was like oh I'll come back with the hand clippers and clean those tops up and then never did that surging that it's doing it needs some carburetor work but after it gets warmed up and after it starts moving some water, it kind of quiets down a little bit. Hey, hear it back there? Sounds different now. Just started moving some water. I can hear it moving through the hose. Oh, there's another big old hole. We got a leak. And we got a kink. All right, I'll probably let that hole roll along just fine. Let's see. Couple twists. All right, it's, uh, and then there's a twist all the way up at the sprinkler. So as water started moving through the line, it'll just pull any or push any twist 
all the way up until it can't go anymore. So while we're here, I'll take a look in the truck, see if I can find a set of clippers and go clean up those trees. It's only a couple of them. And then we'll go move on to something else. A couple of these aren't bad. It's gonna try to give them a little bit better shape. This is one where, I don't know, I guess we'll go all the way back to like here maybe. And then it's got a little better, better top to it. This was the one here I said is huge. My reach is every bit of eight feet. And we're another at least two to three beyond that. But this has a wacky triple top. I gotta figure out which one to try to save. And they've all twisted together. Go back down in, into here and figure out, all right, this one grows off from the side all the way down here. take that out all together and the other one I'm probably just gonna cut it kind of part way because it's adding some of the fullness to the top and this I'll just cut up here we can always take more off about eight feet right now another one I, I let these go way too long we're gonna try to keep the one that's the thickest Well, I don't love the way some of those look, but I think they'll look fine once you get a tree topper and some decorations on it. So my son and I walked around a few weeks ago with a measuring stick and kind of took inventory. We have just under 70 trees that are over six feet tall, and we're going to put, I think, 55 of those up for sale this year. And the, uh, the others that go unsold will just become bigger trees for next year. And at the very back, we do have a lot more Murray Cypress uh, that will be bigger for next year. So I think next year we'll exceed the 100 number, which was, I was going for that this year, just didn't happen. But uh, we'll have 100 trees from the field. We are bringing in 600 pre-cut trees, a huge number for us. I think I've sold 50 of those to another small seller that's just trying to sell trees for the first time. I got a little nervous. The most we've sold ever last year was I think 435, if my memory serves me correctly. 
and so going from that up to 600 i think is a pretty big jump and given kind of the state of the economy and i think some people are pulling back on spending i just got a little bit trigger shy on that purchase those trees are already bought and paid for they're not here yet so uh anyway unloading a few of them to another seller and brings my count down uh the total tree count down to what i think is a much more manageable number for us in our size farm so right up in here is where it starts to get wet and what i'll do is just count this off usually it's like 17 steps four five six seven eight nine ten 12 13 14 15 16 17 look at that so what we're going to do is just move off in this direction find where it's wet and place the sprinkler 17 steps that way it's a little weak might have a kink in it somewhere that's a couple of these bends are too sharp Got to get a couple of these zigzags out and it'll improve the flow and the sprinkler will spray better. So this video actually started a couple days ago. We've been watering more or less non-stop by moving the sprinkler every 30 to 45 minutes or so. And one of my pumps isn't acting right and some of my hoses were messed up and I don't have enough fittings to fix all my hoses, but I'm gonna get some more and I still need to get the very back of the field. But everything from where I'm standing forward or where I'm standing towards the pond has been watered this section over here has been watered some of uh on the other side of that tall grass we could reach but everything that's back here which is murray's and carolina sapphires some of those carolina sapphires are going to be harvested this season uh, we haven't been able to get to any of that yet so i've got at least one more day of irrigation basically three full days or three days straight watering just to get each of the main sections well enough uh, up from from this point to the to the pond so this is just the kind of thing that we shouldn't have to do in November am I about to get wet almost about to get wet uh, this is the kind of thing that we do in the middle of the summer but uh, this year we had enough rain throughout most of the summer I hardly had to irrigate at all and uh, now here we are last year we were actually really spoiled I definitely did not irrigate at all all last summer so maybe this is just a little bit of payback, but that's just nature of the beast with a farm and just kind of at the mercy of the weather. When I'm not moving the sprinkler around, I'm getting back to firewood because I need to get moving on firewood inventory, which you can see here. I've got a little bit of a start on next year's wood. I've got the kiln in the background which has a wood stove in it and that's drying out some wood i've got pending orders that'll pretty much exhaust all of the dry wood that i have so once that that wood in the kiln is ready to go then i can start selling wood again but we'll be coming up to christmas time and i won't be selling too much wood while we're open for christmas just because we're going to be busy so uh anyway that's what's happening around here always something to do and I'll give you guys another Christmas update here real soon because we are starting to get everything ready for that. That's just a couple weeks away. But uh, in the meantime, you guys have a good one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.